Hey, this is Joe from Personas. This one's for the Pro Tools folks. How do you audio suite in Studio One? Now, it's not just for Pro Tools folks. If you don't know about this feature, it's good to know in Studio One. But in Pro Tools, if you want to take a, an event, uh, they call them regions in Pro Tools, and you want to apply a plugin just to that event, and you don't want to use automation to turn that, whatever those effects are, on and off. You just have this one region, like, like this. Let's say this snare hit. I want to turn that into its own event Whoops! by double-clicking. And I want to just apply some like delay just to this part. And rather than doing automation, for whatever reason, I want to apply it to the audio itself. In Pro Tools, that's called Audio Suite. So like the plugins in Pro Tools at one point were called RTAS, Real Time Audio Suite. And then you could do just Audio Suite, which was an offline process where you could apply whatever plugin you want to this bit of audio. In Studio One, these chunks of audio are called events. And to apply a plugin to just one event is called event effects. And the way you find those is pressing F4 opens up your inspector over here. And if you kind of rearrange the window a little bit, under here you'll see right here, event effects. And this is right now looking at this specific event that we have selected. And if I click enable, now we can see I have a place for inserts. If you've used Melodyne before in Studio One, this is where Melodyne goes. This is where it shows up. So Melodyne is an event effect in Studio One. But you can do a lot of different things. So for example, I could take this analog delay and drag it here into the event effects. And then I could have it set up to be, you know, tons of feedback, maybe like to the point of causing like a feedback loop. And let's just see what that sounds like. So the snare drum hit is right here just before bar 30. And it goes out of control like I thought it would. Um, so maybe that's too far. But you get the idea. Um, and we could make it a little less... Okay, we'll make it a little less insane, but you get the idea. So if we wanted to give it some sort of width, we do need to change this track to be stereo by just clicking that button. It's now stereo, that's all it takes. And now this will have a width to it that maybe we want. Oh, no it doesn't, hold on, let's uh, turn the width up to 100, now it should. So this isn't a great example from a production standpoint. I wouldn't do this in a song, but you can, you can run with it and decide what you wanna do. This could be something like a reverb, this could be a bit crusher, I mean, really any plugin you have, it doesn't have to be just Personas made plugins can go here. Um, and we can also set it up, if you look here, here's the event effects and here's the tail. So if we have no tail, then the sound is going to stop wherever this event ends. But if we add a tail, then it'll continue, which is what you want for things like reverbs and delay. So we'll give it like a five second tail that I think is going to fade out. And then we'll go ahead and hit render. And what render does is it literally, as you can see, it has rendered this as a new stereo piece of audio that's sitting there. And then you can see in this gray area, this is the tail. This is where the two overlap. We'll still hear this snare hit, but underneath we'll hear that silly delay happening as well. And so it all comes together sounding like this. And that's it. So as you can imagine, you can get really creative with this. You can certainly go too far with it. Uh, but this is how you do that inside of Studio One. Now, if you come back later and say, oh, I wish I had set that differently, or I wish I had put a chorus on top of that as well, we can come over here. You'll notice it now says restore. Guess what? If I click that, it's going to restore the plugin. It's going to restore this like it was. And I can then make as many changes as I want. So if I thought it needs to have a phaser, now I'm going to have I have to do that now. Uh, let's throw a phaser on here, and let's make it as obnoxious as possible. <laughs> and we can say, no, 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 that's the sound I want. We can re-render it like that. It takes just a second, depending on how big the file is, how long, how much the length is. And now we've got this as our rendered event effect.
It's just so stupid, but I kind of love it. And to answer your question, these, whatever happens here is still going to go through the normal effects, the normal plugins on that channel. You're just adding extra effects to that particular region. Also, a shortcut for, and I'm going to test this now because I always forget. Um, if I want to do an event effects and I don't have the F4 window open, I believe I can drag this onto a region and hold down. Yep, if I hold down Option on the Mac, I think it's Alt on the PC, it will add an event effect there. We know it's there because this region now has this tiny, tiny little arrow that says FX. So we know there's an event effect on there, and we can always find it by hitting F4 and opening up the side. We'll see there's a phaser there. Does that make sense? So I don't, don't technically, if I know what settings I want, I don't technically have to even look over here, but I will need to come over here to render that when I'm done. And the reason you render is if it's a really complicated set of plugins that is going to cause your computer to choke a little bit when it comes on that spot. Um, this allows you to render it. I mostly just use the render with Melodyne because I know when I'm done tuning, I'm not going to want to go back. And if I do, I can still get back to there, but I don't need the computer processing Melodyne every time I play the song. Uh, so those things I'll Melodyne. For something like this, it's not that big of a deal. I might just leave it unprocessed or unrendered so I can just get back to it quicker. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching this. Whether you are a Pro Tools user or not, event effects are very cool. Uh, and if you are a Pro Tools user and that's one of the features that you want to make sure that you have inside of Studio One, of course you have that inside of Studio One. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.